Hiya, DT Mr. C here, and this is my fourth video on mechanical systems and mechanisms. If you've watched my first three videos on this, it will be an advantage because we're going to build on some of the topics that I looked at in those three videos. Today, we're going to look at mechanical advantage, we're going to look at pulleys in more detail, velocity ratio, efficiency, and we're also going to do some calculations. GCSE students, check with your teacher first because some of this will apply to you, some of it won't. It depends on what exam board you're studying. Did you know that wheelbarrows and levers make it easier to move stuff because they give a mechanical advantage and that mechanical advantage equals load divided by effort? <laughs> you will do. Just think about the word advantage. It doesn't exactly sound like it's going to make things harder, does it? If anything, it sounds like it's going to make things a lot easier by giving you an advantage. Right, from my first video on mechanical devices, hopefully you'll recognise this as the first order lever. I'm lifting a brick with it. And I don't have to apply as much force to lift this brick because the lever is giving me a mechanical advantage to make it easier. Here's two examples. The first one is somebody lifting a brick up with a stick. The second one is a wheelbarrow. There you go, a mechanical advantage of four, meaning an effort of five newtons can lift a load four times heavier at 20 newtons. Effort and load, like all forces, are measured in newtons, and mechanical advantage doesn't have any units at all. This wheelbarrow has a mechanical advantage of three. This means that the effort needed to lift the load is only a third of the load. Remember, this is because the effort is further away from the pivot than the load, the pivot being the wheel. Right, here's a scene you'll see on every building site up and down the country. Somebody at the top of some scaffolding being passed something heavy by somebody at the bottom. They're using a single pulley system, so when he pulls on that rope, it raises the heavy load. Now it's useful because the person at the bottom can pass something to the person at the top, but it doesn't offer any mechanical advantage because there's only one pulley. In other words, if that heavy thing weighed 100 newtons, the person at the bottom would still have to pull with a force of 100 newtons. Heave. Oh, thanks, pal. Right, this version of the system has two pulleys, one there and one there. And you might think that'll make things easier to raise the load, but it actually doesn't. It doesn't make any difference. You still have to pull with 100 newtons, if that weighs 100 newtons, because there's only one thickness of rope taking up the strain. This system's got two pulleys, one there and one there. And when you pull it, this time it will be much, much easier to raise the weight. In fact, if that weight was 100 newtons, you'd have to use roughly 50 newtons to pull it. This is because the weight of the load is being evenly divided up between those two lengths of rope. It's being supported by two pieces of rope. So it gives it a mechanical advantage of roughly two. In this example, the load's actually supported by three lengths of rope, giving it a mechanical advantage of three. And this enables us to actually calculate what effort will be required to lift that load. So if you start off with the formula that mechanical advantage equals load divided by effort, you can rearrange it to get effort equals load divided by mechanical advantage. Some of you like to use a triangle like in the top right hand corner to do this. And then if you sub the numbers in, you can work out that the effort equals 200 newtons, meaning that this system allows you to move a heavy load where the effort is only a third of the load. We're gonna have a look at velocity ratio now. Do you remember the stick that picked up the brick? The end that I had hold of, the effort end, had to move faster and further than the end where the load was. In this example, the load acts two metres from the pivot. We tend to measure the distance from the centre of the load because this centre of gravity, as it's called, is where the weight actually acts from. The person is pushing down on the other end to lift the load, and in this example, this is six metres from the pivot. Clearly, the effort end is going to move much further than the load because the effort arm is much longer. So, velocity ratio 
equals the distance of the effort to the pivot divided by the distance of the load to the pivot. And this equals six divided by two, which is three. Or because it's a ratio, you can write it like this as well. Either three or three to one. In other words, the effort end moves three times further and three times faster than the load end. We're going to talk about efficiency now. In other words, does all of the energy that we put into a system get transferred as useful energy or does some get wasted? Not all of the electrical energy gets transferred as useful light. Some of it ends up getting wasted, heating the light bulb up. And not all of the energy that I put into that lever gets transferred into lifting the brick up. Some of it gets wasted as friction at the pivot. Machines like levers are really, really good for helping us do stuff. For example, a small effort there can move a much heavier load there. But the trade-off is that you have to move that end much further than that end moves. And not all of the energy that you put into it gets converted into useful energy to move the load. So we're now going to look at calculating how efficient this system is. If you want to, just pause the video now so you can read the question. The velocity ratio, we can abbreviate it to VR. The formula's there, it's the same as in the last example. It comes out at 4 to 1. Right, mechanical advantage, or MA as we can abbreviate it to, that equals load over effort, which is 150 newtons divided by 50, which comes out at 3. And efficiency equals mechanical advantage divided by velocity ratio times 100, and this comes out at 75%, showing us that 75% of the energy that we put in actually gets transferred usefully. So this is actually quite an inefficient system because we're wasting 25% of the energy that we're putting in just as friction at the pivot. In my Mechanical Devices 3 video, I showed you how the belt and pulley system, these are two pulleys and that's the belt, they're used in the pillar drill and in the washing machine. So if this was the washing machine, that would be the motor, that would be the drum, the motor turns around, they connect together with a belt. So I'm going to teach you now how to work out the velocity ratio of this system and also how to calculate input and output speeds. To start off with and to simplify things, I've drawn my Lego mechanism on the computer and I've put the sizes on of the two pulleys. We also have to look at using the right technical language because this is how it might be referred to on an exam paper. So the input is called a driver, the output is called the driven. And that's exactly the same as when we looked at gears. Let's have a look at working out this question. If you want to read the question more carefully, pause the video now. The formula you need to work out the velocity ratio of a belt pulley system is velocity ratio equals diameter of driven pulley divided by the diameter of the driver pulley. That's 100 divided by 20, which is 5. This can also be written as 5 to 1. And part B, the speed of the driven pulley equals the speed of the driver pulley divided by the velocity ratio. We work it out and it comes out at 40 revolutions per minute. Right, that's all for my fourth and final video on mechanisms. Watch the music at the end because there's some interesting facts. The first part of it is instrumental, but then there's some lyrics and vocals for you to sing along to. Bye for now.
advantage. Makes things easier to move. It equals load over effort. Levers and pulleys. I'm sure you'll agree. Make things easier and therefore better. To do this, the input must move further than the output because you can't get something for nothing. We measure this using velocity ratio which compares how far and fast the input and output are moving. Machines aren't perfect because some energy gets wasted. Being transferred as heat due to friction. Efficiency is the measure of how much useful energy is transferred.